What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out The Wandering Village. This is a colony survival game that's set on the back of like a giant dragon that just sort of wanders around. Uh, so we're going to check out this demo, we're going to see if it's awesome. The demo will be freely available during the Steam Festival, which is later on this month. So if you found it to be appealing after you watch me play it, you can go check it out for yourself and validate all of the stuff that I say during this episode. I highly recommend you do that with all of the things that I do. It never hurts to double check the things that people say on the internet. The internet is a wild and crazy place. But anyways, The Wandering Village. I'll have a link for you down below in the description, and then on top of that, you'll be able to find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to swing on through and say hello. We've got about 25 minutes to kill, so let's go ahead and start it on off. Start a new game. Sploot. There we go. That sounds like a good name. Driven from our homes by the toxic spores. We kept wandering, looking for shelter. But not in our wildest dreams did we imagine what we would find. It's kind of an adorable dragon. I'd name him something like Kyle. I think that's a really good name for an all-powerful dragon. Hello, my friend. My name is Ombus Mumblemore, and I am the village elder. Our people, the Neomans, have traveled far and endured many hardships throughout the years. But now we have come across an Onbu, an ancient beast believed to have gone extinct centuries ago. Our encounter is fated. It was most likely been asleep in the ground for a very long time. Maybe it woke up because the toxins keeping the fur keep seeping further and further into the earth. The poor thing seems exhausted and has gone back to sleep for now. I once read that the Anbu get their nutrients from the ground, so I wonder if it can sustain itself out here. Seems like we need to take care of each other from now on. My experience has brought our people here, but now it is time for you to take over. To ease the transition, I will teach you what I have learned. Sure, why not? Alright, so there's my little peepo right there. They're wandering around. It wants me to open a notebook. There you go. I have, I have opened the notebook. Okay, so there's a number of different ways that we can view the world here. It looks like we've got access to kind of a town view, and then we've got access to Onbu Vision. So there he is, Kyle, sleeping peacefully right now. Well done, Kyle. You continue getting your restfulness. And then we also have a world map, so obviously the Onbu is going to be able to move around. And so from time to time, I get the feeling we're going to have to walk Kyle, otherwise he's going to be he's going to be like my Labrador Retriever puppy. If he doesn't get walked and he doesn't get some of that energy out, he's just going to be maximum strength annoying for the rest of the day. Like, he's going to drive you nuts. So, like, we really got to, we got to, we got to, we got to get the exercise in. We got to do it. We got to play fetch with Kyle. All right. So, it wants me to build some huts. I can do that. Huts are easy. Oh, tents. Okay. So, I've got to gather some wood, too. It looks like we do have a gathering menu right here. I'm going to go ahead and shave Kyle's back. Because, you know, everybody loves a good back shaving. It'll make you go like, like it feels good. Uh, we'll probably put in some of these tents right here. I have 30 wood right now, which is not the largest amount of wood. I don't know if these are rotatable. There is no key binding for rotation inside the settings. So I'm guessing we're probably not allowed to rotate this bad boy. Uh, they're going to go ahead and grab some wood from the stockpile right there. Actually, the art style is very much, it's its reminiscent of, like, uh, Kanga, actually. That's what it reminds me of. I love these little 2D on top of 3D games. I always, I always talk about that whenever I do videos like this, but it is one of my most favorite art styles. I just, I love it when games have 2D on top of 3D. All right, so we want that to be, like, right there. So that we've, I'm going to try to make, like, a semicircle of just kind of, like, tents that are doing their thing. So like, I figure we go like, I don't know, like right here? Yeah, that's cool. And then we go out right there. That looks pretty good, actually. I feel like having that around the central fire is probably the best way to do this. Hurry along, my little minions. Let your capes flap in the breeze as you make your hands rough with equitable work. That's right, I as your leader will contribute nothing to this experience because that's what a leader does. The puts it, that's what a leader does, right? A leader kicks his feet on up and is just like, yeah, bro. Uh, four more tents ready to go. Perfect. And it looks like the tents actually go up fairly quickly. It looks like we do have differing housing qualities that we're going to have to play around with. So I'm guessing at some point we're going to get nicer houses for right now. 
Oh, look at that, and I can still see my tents on top of Kyle. Well done, Kyle. You're doing your Anbu duties at the level that is Anbu requisite. Anbu is one of those fun words to say. I, I, I can't help but think the developers knew that when they named it an Anbu. Alright, so the tents are done. We've got to get food supply now, so we want to have some farms. I think I can probably do that. Where's the farm at? Farm's right there. Okay. I think this is probably a good spot for a farm. We'll just put it, like, on the edge of town. What did the farm cost me? It cost me wood, and it cost me rocks. Do we have any rocks on top of Kyle? I don't know how many rocks Kyle has available right now. There are some rocks over here. It looks like there's 200 of them, and then there's a bunch of little rocks over there. Little rock, yeah. All right, you guys go gather up some of those goodies right there while everybody else is working on the farm. We've got to put some plots on the farm, but I'm going to let them kind of, like, hammer away at this thing and get it done real fast. It also requires that I have an herbalist, so I suppose I'll do that. Herbalist, can you be like... Okay, herbalist, you be over here. You'll be, like, in the services sector of town. we got to be careful about our zoning. Okay, that's one thing that I know, is that you must be careful about your zoning when it comes to, like, commercial and, like, residential. Uh, yeah. I guess I can... Is that enough plots right there? I think that's enough plots. Now we gotta add some workers. So, it looks like I have three workers right now that are working on my farm. Well done. Verk away, little guys. Verk it up. One thing that's kind of cool about this demo is that the resolution of the little sprites, it stays tight, like, no matter how far in or out you're zoomed in. That's really, really good. What happens a lot of times is developers will use basically a high-res image from, like, right here for the sprite, and then when you zoom in, it gets all chunky and pixelated, and that's bad. It makes the game feel low quality. And so I like, like, I don't know if it's resizing or it's, like, re-rastering or whatever the process is, but it looks good no matter what height or what distance you're looking at it from. Oh, this guy's jiggling some berries. Yeah, dude, jiggle those berries. I, for one, believe in a free society where berries are jiggled freely. Oh, we can add more plots, too. Okay. Well, let's plot it up right there and then add another worker, maybe? So, with crops needs water. Build an air well and a water tank. An air well. It extracts water from the air. Okay. Cool device. Yeah, we'll put that, like, right over here next to where all this stuff is going down because, like, I assume they're going to have to haul that water. And so, like, let's maybe have it all, like, in the same spot. It looks like we're pretty much out of the stuff we're going to need to build the next part, which is the tonk. And so, in order to get all tonked up, I'm going to go ahead and assign people to just tro chop those trees down frivolously, aggressively. We are mankind, and we are here to destroy the environment. Sorry, Kyle. Your environment's about to take a hit there, brother. Uh-oh. Yo, the Kyle has awakened. What's up, bro? You, uh, feeling a little bit zippy? Oh, the Kyle is mobile. Let us give praise to the Kyle who bears us away to new lands. I love the watercolor sort of hand-painted backgrounds. They look great. Like, it's 2D, but it gives, like, kind of 3D depth by the way that they've layered it. Very cool. I don't, I know not where Kyle is taking us, but Kyle is dragging us off somewhere, so I think we just kind of have to accept that the ways of the Kyle are sometimes indiscernible, and that we should just go along with it based on our unerring faith in Kyle. So just out of, like, self-preservation and preparation for the future, I found that most games that require you to have water... Uh, building one tank is never quite enough, and so I built two just to make sure that we had enough. Uh, they are chopping trees down here. That should make sure that the stockpile has a lot more stuff. There is a material storage right here. I do think that that's a cool idea. Like, we could get one of those and maybe just, like, plop it in the center of town. It bums me out that I can't center that, but sometimes things are not optimal. Sometimes things don't work the way you want them to. That's kind of like life. Uh, our second water tank is almost ready to roll. I don't know if we need workers to work at these places. Doesn't look like it. It seems like we're okay. And it looks like the air well actually takes into account the amount of, I guess, water in the air, like the humidity, I suppose. Okay. Let's give them a minute to do their thing, and the next thing it wants me to make is a research building. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get some more of these rocks over here. 
Just to make sure that we have enough stone to really get things done, I'm going to check on Kyle real fast, and I'm going to give him like a little pet. There we go. You guys scratch Kyle behind his dragon ears real fast just to make him feel better. There we go. Who's a good Kyle? You're a good Kyle. This is going to be a really epi this is going to be a really weird episode for people named Kyle that watch my channel. I'm pointing that out right now because like I am fully aware of the fact that if your name is Kyle, you keep hearing your name, your ears keep pricking up while you're trying to like procrastinate at work and like half watch my video while you're also half filing reports or something. But you know, it, it is what it is. I named the dragon Kyle. I mean, what else was I supposed to name him? You know what I mean? Bobunkle? Like that's not even a good dragon name. That's a terrible dragon name. So now that we have more resources gathered up, and by the way, I apologize, right now there's at least several Bobunkles in my audience that are like, you know what, I feel really targeted by this new vein of content that you're creating. Uh, I am offended. I am deeply upset about the way that you've called me out. This is my family name. It is full of honorable activities, and I won't stand for it. I will be tendering my unsubscription immediately. Farewell, good sir. Uh, but anyways, we got like a, we got a whole bunch of stone lined up. So, we can make a research building. I do like that we have a central stockpile that stores like 30 of everything. Unfortunately, we have far more than 30 of everything. And so it wants me to get into here and it wants me to research the kitchen building. So I will do that. Uh, it looks like pantry is available for storage. I don't know if the pantry is going to make it like rot slower or if there is even rotting to be considered inside the mechanics of the game. However, we do have... Do we have... So we have a stone cutter over here. Do we have like a lumberjack or like a forester? So it can be mined for wood by an adjacent sawmill. But it looks like I don't have that technology available for right now. On the world map, where is Kyle going? Oh, wow. So Kyle has... Wait, hold on. What is that on the road right there? And why does it look like nomads? A group of nomads that are looking for a new home. Huh. Okay, so this is kind of like Kyle is going to... We're going to hitchhike out here. Uh, so we've got the horn blower. We can issue commands to the Anbu, which it may or may not follow. Okay, so the Anbu is kind of cat-like. Like, the Anbu is not like a dog... Where, like, I can give a command to either of my dogs, and they are excited to follow through with it. Like, they are stoked. They were like, yes, nothing would make me happier. They're like cats, though. All right, so you can, you can like, mildly suggest that the Anbu should do something. But really, whether or not it happens comes down to the Anbu himself and whether or not he's had a good rest and if his food bowl is full. Now, let's do the kitchen, because that's what it obviously wanted. And then we'll worry about what we're doing next. I think... Does this place, so the research building, all right, so they're growing crops down here. That's good. We have one idle villager right now because the rest of them are just kind of like mining over here. You can hear like faint mining songs coming from that corner of the king, from the corner of the kingdom. You gotta let go of fear when you come down in here. You guys ever heard that song? That's an old country song right there. That was like, that's like from the late 50s. That's an old one. If it wasn't for my granddad, I wouldn't know about that one either. All right, so let's see. We've got beets growing. Okay, you picked up a group of nomads who have now joined your village. Did we? Was that necessary? Like, why couldn't we just banish them to the salt wastes and keep the great and powerful resources of Kyle to ourselves? I'm just saying. Uh, is there a place where it tells me how many people have homes? Uh, it does. It's this little menu right here. So we're going to go ahead and finish our little circle over here. I'll probably plop in like two more houses just to keep things nice and comfy. And then we'll have a dirt road that kind of runs out this way. Oh no, it doesn't center. Well, it kind of does. Okay, well you guys can dig a road right there. Digging a road there, boss. Okay, so he's getting the road all nice and done. It does look like the road actually serves a function. It looks like the road makes people speedier. So I should probably create some kind of like infrastructure that connects these roads that would probably be what a smart lord would do right now there we go we'll have that run over to there and then we'll have this run over to here and just make it all nice and party there we go that looks pretty good to me 
I can live with that. And then that'll allow us to go, God, I love how the game holds resolution no matter where you zoom it to. It looks tight no matter what altitude you've got yourself zoomed out to. That's such a major immersion factor when it comes to the art design of a game. Like, I just, I can't stand it when I zoom out and things get fuzzy or they get weird looking. Or when you go in and it looks all blocky and chunky. Like, it's like, ah, it's only from, like, that perfect level of camera view that it looks good. All right, so we need to have a kitchen, a carpenter, and a stone cutter. Let's do it. Uh, carpentry ho! Well, maybe I should leave that open right there, just in case. We'll put our carpenter... I don't know, we'll put him down to, like, the south side of town. That's cool, that's cool. And then we need a stone cutter. Does the stone... So they make slabs out of stone. I was hoping the stone cutter would actually, like, cut the stone off the rock over here. I saw a gif of that the other day. Okay, not the other day, like a year ago. But it was, like, some guy in Egypt, and he was showing, like, the classic historical way that the ancient Egyptians used to cut stone blocks. And, like, it looked like it was such a pain, and also you might be crushed at any moment. Uh, it was equal parts horrifying, awesome, and historical. So we've got 34 herbs right there. I may actually move the stockpiles around. Haven't made up my mind just yet, but I feel like I could probably move the stockpile around to make it a little bit more effective. We've only got 12 wood left, so we are going to want to start gathering a few more logs over here. It's log, it's log, it's big, it's round, it's wood. What is that right there? A mushroom. Gotcha. Kyle, where are we headed right now? So there's a city over there. There's a forest over there. Okay. So apparently we're going to get kind of like, I guess, Frostpunk-style expedition parties that are going to be able to parachute off the Kyle and into, like, action zones to go get us resources. Uh, we can get a village doctor or we can get a horn blower. Let's get the horn blower because I feel like having a small amount of control over Kyle is better than having no control over Kyle, which is kind of where we're at right now. We sort of have no control, and like, what if Kyle gets scared by a snake or something, and he just takes off, you know? I'd like to have some modicum of like, whoa there, Kyle, that's a good Kyle. Slow down, Kyle, you know? The other thing it wanted me to slap down is a kitchen, so I'll go ahead and have that road run over to there. And then we kind of want this to run out this way. There we go. And we'll kind of interconnect it all. Dude, I really like this city we're building right now. I'm really, really pleased that this circle came out so well. Apparently all those hours I spent playing Minecraft in college still allow me to make circles out of, like, square grids. It came together so much better than I thought it would. All right, so you guys get the roads mashed out. Uh, the other thing we probably wants to get down on is we've got a kitchen over here, but we need planks and we need slabs. So we've got a little bit more time until that gets done. Let's go ahead and employ people up so that their productivity goes a little bit faster. And then how many unemployed people do I have right now? There's eight unemployed people. That doesn't really matter because they sort of act as the village gophers to just go grab everything. No, not the land mammal gopher. That's different. Those live in the ground, they go like... And then they dig up your front yard and leave mounds everywhere. A pantry would probably be a solid choice as well. How big is the pantry? Can I squeeze it on in over here? I can. Okay. Good. Uh, let's go ahead and we will get the kitchen right here. There we go. Kitchen ready to rock. And then we will put a pantry right next to it. All right. So we've got another research option coming up. We can get a scavenger hut or we can get a village doctor. I'm going to go with the civic option for right now, and it appears as though the Kyle has become tired. Okay. Yeah, dude, take a little nap. It's all good, brother. You get a sleep in. You do your thing, man. I assume he's going to go after food pretty soon. That's my guess anyways. His meter's filling up pretty fast. I don't know if he just kind of, like, satisfies his needs freely, but they are hauling and moving everything to the food area, which is great. So I can live with that. I don't know what I want to do next. Uh, so the tutorial is going to tell me. 
We can get a worker post. So these guys can specialize as transporters, harvesters, and builders. And they get a movement speed boost for being given that job designation. Okay. I think we can probably get away with having one like right there. And then we can make a dirt road that kind of runs down to here. And just connects everything up. It might be lacking in symmetry. But I'm willing to forsake symmetry. That's right, symmetry. Thou hast been forsook. Going to pick some berries over there. Food supplies looking okay. How long does it take these little beets to grow? No space for planting. All right, well, if I see that start to dip right there, we'll go ahead and gather some more berries because I feel like we're kind of in that early RimWorld period where everything is fruitful and there's food everywhere unless you did a desert start and then you're, like, licking a cactus hoping that it will slake your hunger. So people actually work at the research place. Okay. How many unemployed people do we have? Four unemployed people. Well, I suppose I will put them all in the worker's hut. Yeah, you guys just do general tasks. You have my blessing to go forth and do what thou will. All right. Other things have at least two carriers. All right, well, I put them on carrier for like an eighth of a second, and it let us get past that part of the tutorial. Uh, village doctor is up next, and we will build the village doctor next, so I think we're good. I think Kyle is going to stay sleepy for a little bit, so I don't think we have to worry too much about Kyle going anywhere on us. I'm going to let her run for a moment. So it looks like you do get additive efficiency from actually cooking food in this game. Uh, since they, we don't have to deal with like food poisoning or illness or anything else like that, it looks to me as though... Can I set caps on these while we're on the question? Can I set like a limit, like only make 20 of these, only make 20 of these? doesn't look like I can. It's kind of a bummer, but I'm okay with it. Uh, it wants me to get a scavenger. Well, we'll do the Anbu kitchen because our Anbu is getting pretty hungry right now. And I think by tomorrow, he's probably going to need to be fed. That might also make him nice to us. Like, my, my thinking is you don't want your Anbu going on like a murderous rampage uh, because he hasn't been fed in a while. Oh, there's a house right there. Okay, we'll put the doctor... I guess we'll put him on the edge of town. It's probably a good idea to keep the lamentations and the screams of the dying away from the central sleeping area. Tends to unsettle people. So, they have water. They have full herbs. Is there, like, an herb storage building? Oh, there's a berry gatherer. Oh. I should probably get down on that. I mean, our food is slightly net positive. But I think a berry gatherer might not be a terrible idea. Let's go ahead and we will gather harvest only fully grown objects. Harvest only trees. There we go. Give me some Give me some tree out here. Uh, we need some more wood. Yep. Go get them, tiger. I'm guessing at some point we're going to get some kind of forester or something. Uh, we can make this, the horn blower. So that's probably a good plan. And I should probably put the horn blower like over here somewhere near the Anbu's head. Feels smart to me. So let's go ahead and we'll put the horn blower like all the way over here. But we will connect him with a road so that he can get out there fast. Uh, I don't really have any people to become village doctors. And so alas and alack, I don't think that I can knock that together. However, they are starting to move all the herbs over to the doctor's hut so that when we do actually find a doctor, we will be okay. Uh, food is very much net positive now. I'm going to be honest, I don't know where these doctors came from. Uh, I thought all my people were employed, but now we have people in Cyclops hats, like, hanging out. And, of course, Kyle has awakened as well. Nothing nothing gets an Anbu moving like the idea that there may be uh, pharmaceutical, I almost said pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical remedies to their bearing passengers' poor health. So there you go. Uh, we're moving that out to there. That's good. We don't really have any rocks. I mean, we could have rocks if you just gather dim rocks. Just saying. You could go get the Rocky Boys right now. You know, it sort of looks to me like Kyle is headed for a desert. 
I think that might not work out for us. I feel like a desert is a really bad plan, Kyle, and I wish you would stop doing what you're doing. Uh, so we can also throw food at the Anbu's head with a trebuchet. The trebuchet is the superior siege engine for all functions. I'm going to get the scavenger hut first, though, because I get the feeling we may need to scavenge. Sort of feels like maybe that'll be a thing. I'm going to put in the berry gatherer's hut over there. And when people get around to gathering some wood, what does that take? It just takes raw wood and raw stone. Okay, is there a way to shut this place down? I'm going to go ahead and shut that down right now because I think we have enough planks for the moment. And I'd like to accumulate like a little bit of wood. I'm going to guess that we're not going to gather much water during this desert adventure, are we? It's kind of what I thought. It's a feeling that I had. Yeah, food production's a little rough right now. We may have to do something about that. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get some of these, like, outlying berries over here, I think. I mean, that's a long walk, though. Do I have anything, like, kind of closer? We do have these ones right over here. I think we could probably snipe these. No, don't get the trees. Just get the crops. There we go. Perfect. I don't want to mess with these down here because I'm going to make them into a berry gatherer's thing again in the future. But, you know, remove harvest tasks. Yeah, go ahead and cancel those trees right there, maybe. Oh, okay. I see it's linked. There we go. All right, perfect. Now we can go back in and go with crops and just kind of shave some of these off the edges right there. Yeah, that'll work. That'll get her done. Now, how's the berry gatherer going? Berry gatherer going okay? If we could pick up some more people, that'd be fantastic. It looks like we've got nomads in either direction, so that should bolster up our workforce a little bit. I did want to see how the scavenger works. So we've got a decontaminator. You can get rid of toxic plants. Let's get the feeding trebuchet because, once again, I strongly feel as though feeding the giant dragon is a really good idea. Some people might disagree with that course of action. I think feeding the dragon is a fantastic idea because if we're not feeding him, he may go rogue and he may begin feeding himself. Uh, God forbid, off of someone like me. So we probably want the Anbu kitchen to be somewhere near. Oh, don't do that. I cancel you. Oh, it didn't wipe out my road. Yay. Happy to see that. Sometimes with games, if you overplace a building on top of a road, the footprint will wipe out your road so that if you misplace it, you wipe your road, then you got to cancel it, then you got to rebuild the road, which uses up like labor force. So anyways, I'm glad to see that that was not the case. I assume that it probably wipes out the road or gets rid of the road once all the materials have been delivered, maybe. But that's good. That's really, really good. So this guy's gathering berries now at a 65% efficiency. Okay, good for you, Bruda. The food and water situation seems to be going okay. And so I think when we pick up these new nomads, we should be all right as far as our workflow goes. Food is still a little bit rough. Like, I do think that food could be better. But... I can make a second berry gatherer down here once we've got those new nomads to kind of like offset the amount of food that they're going to be eating. And so we'll put you in right there real fast. And then that should be good enough, hopefully. And then we still have some tasks for the berries over here on the left too that haven't been fulfilled. Where are these people going? Oh, I thought they were going to throw themselves off of Kyle in despair for the way that I've been leading the settlement. It's a worry. I just, I didn't want people to go to drastic lengths. Uh, many of the nomads you picked up are poisoned and will die if the doctor does not treat them. Okay, well, take care of business. Oh, yeah, there they are right there. Okay. There you go. Treat them. All right, they have been treated. Uh, my name is Splattercat. This is the Wandering Village. I'm ensorcelled by this one. 
This is a beautiful, awesome little game. Uh, it looks really, really good. And, like, I'm really excited about playing the final version. I can't wait to check it out. Uh, it looks like we can only put this, like, way off to the side of the map. Yeah, like, they've got to be able to jump off the side of the dragon. So I think the optimal place to put it would probably be, like, right there. That seems like a good enough spot. They filled in all the jobs over there. How many people do we have unemployed? Just one person. Not great. Would definitely prefer to have more people. I was hoping I'd get at least three more people. That way I could fill out... Oh, the Anbu kitchen. So the Anbu eats mushrooms. Ah. Okay, so we need to make a mycologist. That's what's up next. But yeah, this is the Wandering Village. Uh, I'm entranced. This game is remarkably charming, and I like it a lot. It's time for us to wave farewell to Kyle, because we have things to do. But the video is now over. I appreciate you all being here. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Because after all, I am Splattercat, and I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Mission accomplished. I'll see y'all later. Bye, everybody.